Good day, Great Tools. Welcome to this last and final lesson in mathematics for this year. In this year, this exam, in this lesson, sorry, we're going to revise our IB Great Twelve um, Paper Two. So let's get started straight away. It says determine to correct to one decimal place the general solution of sine theta plus two cos theta equals zero. Okay, so you've got sine theta plus two cos theta equals zero. Okay, so what I would do is I would divide everything by cos theta. So if I did that, I would divide this by cos theta and I would divide this by cos theta and obviously zero divided by cos theta is just zero, so we leave that. That means we've got tan theta plus two equals zero. Therefore, tan theta is equal to negative two. But now remember, we want to find the reference angle. The reference angle means that we're just going to do second function of two. The negative, we're going to use our cast diagram, all stations to Cape Town, and we're going to find out exactly which quadrant is in. The negative quadrant will be this one and this one. Tan is positive in the all quadrant and the tan quadrant. But at the moment, we just want to find the size of the reference angle. So we're going to go second function tan. So we're going to go shift. First, we switch it on, shall we? Shift tan of 2, close the bracket, equals 63.43 degrees. But they've asked for one decimal place, so 63,4 degrees. But that's the reference angle. Now we need to attribute it to the right quadrant. So therefore, theta is going to be 180 minus 63, 4 degrees plus K 180 degrees because tan has got a period of 180 degrees or theta is going to be 360 minus 63, 4 degrees plus K 180 because it's in the fourth quadrant. So let's work out what that is. So it's going to be 180 minus, let's try again, minus 63.4 equals, that helps for a lot, 116.6. So it's 116 comma 6 degrees plus K 180 degrees, or it is going to be 290 six comma six degrees plus k 180 degrees there you go so there's your general solution for that okay not too bad if you realize that you're looking if you've got a sign in a cause you're looking at tan right now it says if sine of 80 degrees equals m express the following in terms of m so remember that this means m over one okay so we could actually draw a triangle and know these aren't to scale where this would be 80 degrees and this would be 10 degrees and we've got Sakatoa. So sine is opposite of our part in use. That means that this is m over 1. Therefore this would be the square root of 1 minus m squared, right? Now we also need to do a cast diagram. Oh, Shabbat. Sorry. All stations to Cape Town. The cos of negative 10 is in the fourth quadrant, which means it's positive. And cos of 10 is adjacent over hypotenuse, which is just M. That's nice and easy. Now we've got cos of 160. Do you agree that's the same as saying cos? of 180 minus, oh no, I'm being silly. Do you agree that's the same as saying cos two times 80 degrees? Okay, cos 160 is two times 80. Now we also know that cos 2a can be written as cos squared a minus sine squared a or it can be written as 2 cos squared a minus 1 
or it can be written as 1 minus 2 sine squared a. And since they gave us sine of 80, I'm going to use this one here, this last one. So I'm going to say this is 1 minus 2 sine squared 80, but sine of 80 is m, so that becomes, what do I have this appears to? 1 minus 2 m squared. There you go. Okay, so don't panic too much when you see anything, and please remember that when it says sine 80 equals m, it really means m over 1, and therefore you have got to include that, okay? Now it says, the graph of f, f of x equals sine 2x, sine 2x, okay, is given for minus 180 to 90. Okay, it's shown below. Write down the range of f. So do you see this goes from 1 to minus 1. So the range would be y is smaller than equal to 1 and greater than equal to negative 1 for y is an element of real values. Always have to remember that bit there. Now it says determine the period of f of 3 over 2x. Hmm, that's interesting. So let's do that. f of 3 over 2x would be sine 2 times 3 over 2x, right? Which means that this cancels with this and suddenly we've got sine 3x. So what does that 3 do? It actually takes the period and divides it by 3. So normally the period would be 360 degrees for a complete sine wave, but this 3 means that we can have three complete waves in that period, so we divide by three, so that is 120 degrees. The correct answer for this is 120 degrees. Nice question. Now it says, describe the transformation that the graph f will undergo in order to produce a function of y is equal to sine two, x plus 30. So what is happening? We're shifting the x, the graph, and are we shifting it left or right? Well, there's a very easy way to work this out. We can just put in x equals zero and see what we end up with. So if we do that, we can go y is equal to sine two of zero plus 30 degrees, which is sine of 60 degrees, okay? So we're saying that when y is, when we say x is zero in this function, We've got the same value as y equals sine of 60 degrees. And if you remember, it goes 60, 30, 2, 1, root 3. So sine is opposite of our partners, which is root 3 over 2. So at, which is 1 and a bit. So, no, it's not. Okay, so basically at 0, the graph is up here. So do you agree that it's been shifted to the left? So this is a shift to the left by, and how many degrees is it shifted? By 30 degrees. Has it shifted by 30 degrees? No, it hasn't. It's actually shifted by 60 degrees. Do you see that? Because it's two times 30, so it's actually a double shift. So it's actually by 60 degrees. Sneaky question, that. Sneaky, sneaky. Right. So now we're looking at analytical, actually, I don't know where we are. Yes, we are. We've got two straight lines. Y is equal to X minus 2, which is obviously this one. Y is equal to X minus 2, because that there is minus 2. Then it says, and 5Y plus 3X equals 30, which can be rewritten as 5Y is equal to minus 3X plus 30. So y is going to be negative 3 over 5x plus 6. So for that value, there is 6. Okay. And this is that graph there. Now it says, determine the coordinates of a, b, and c. Okay. So if y is equal to x minus 2, and um, there's the equation for this line, do you agree that b has got to equal 2, but they want the coordinates. So you can't just write 2, you have to write that b is at point 2, 0. x is 2, y is 0, because the gradient is 1 to 1. Okay. For c, we've got y is equal to the minus 3 over 5, x plus 6. So we're going to let y equal 0 and solve for x. 
um, we could actually do it into the original. So we can go 5y plus 3x equals 30. We're going to let y equal 0 to find out what the x value is. So 3x is equal to 30. So x is equal to 10. So therefore c is 10, 0. And now we need to find B. Now B is where these two lines cut each other, which means we need to let them be equal. So therefore we've got X minus 2, that's this equation, is equal to negative 3 over 5X plus 6. So if we take things across and across, we get X plus 3 over 5. X is equal to 8. So that's the same as 5 over 5 degrees. So therefore that's 8 over 5x is equal to 8. We multiply this by 5 over 8. And if you have to multiply this by 5 over 8 as well, these cancel. So x is equal to 5. So the x point of that is 5. Now we need to find the y coordinate. We can substitute into either the left hand side or the right hand side, but seriously, 5 minus 2 is much easier than this. So therefore, 5 minus 2 is just 3. There we go. So the point A is going to be 5, 3. Excellent. So now we have found our three points. Nice and easy here. Next says calculate the area of triangle ABC. Okay, so do you agree we've got the length of BC? Okay. Um, so the area we can use either a half base times height, or we can use um, a half AB sine C. But I think that since we know that that there is three units up, we can actually use half base times height and we've got the length of the base. So we can say, okay, fine, that B, the area is gonna be a half. This point here is two and that is 10. So that's going to be eight times by the height. The height of this is three, so that's three. So it's gonna be four multiplied by three, which is 12 units squared. I don't know what the measurement is here. Next it says calculate the size of alpha and theta. Okay, well alpha is pretty easy because that is the angle that this makes with the um, x-axis. So we've got alpha, okay wait, we've got tan alpha equals m of ab, right? But the m of ab is just one. So we've got, that must just be 45 degrees. So alpha is equal to 45 degrees. Oh, no man, stop. So that's 45 degrees. Right, now we need theta. Now there are two ways we can get theta. We can find the angle for AC. And okay, the easiest way to get theta is to work out what this little angle is here. And then add it to that to get this because the exterior angle is the sum of the two interior opposite angles. So let's get the gradient of AC, which is going to be 3 minus 0 over 5 minus 10, which is going to be negative 3 over 5. Didn't we have that already? Oh, we did. There we go. It's the gradient. So we didn't even have to work it out. Silly me. So we have the gradient of that is negative 3 over 5. Okay, and let's call that equal to tan of, let's call that x, shall we? Tan x. So therefore we can say that x is going to be second function tan of 3 over 5. Now remember the negative just gives you the slope. So we want the reference angle and it may give us the obtuse angle in which case we're going to subtract from 180. So let's go and have a look. So we've got shift tan of 3 over 5 
close bracket equals 30.96, so we're going to make it 31, 30.96 degrees. So x equals 30, 96 degrees. Therefore, theta is equal to 45 plus, let's round up to one decimal, so it's 31 degrees, which is going to be 76 degrees. So theta is equal to 76 degrees. So alpha's Alpha is 45 degrees and theta is 76 degrees. Right, now it says write down the coordinates of D such that ACDB is a parallelogram. A, C, so they want the coordinates here. DB is a parallelogram. A, C, D, B. Right, so we need it to be down here somewhere. So do you agree that the amount that it's gone down here has got to be the same as the amount it went down here? And this point here is 10, 0, and this point has gone from 5, 3 to 2, 0. So it gone, went down three values there. So here it's going to go down three, so the y value is negative three. Oh, the x is going from 2 to 5. So therefore, if it's going from 2 to 5, it's going to cross 3. So this way it has to go back 3 as well. So 10 minus 3 is 7. So therefore, this point D has to be 7, negative 3. Beautiful, lovely question. Right, now it says, refer to the diagram. Okay, so we've got A is 0, 4. C is minus 2, 0. And B is 8, 0. Okay, so let's verify that C... A, B is a right angle triangle. C, A, B is a right angle triangle. Okay, and oh, we'll verify that C, A, B is a right angle. So do you agree that if this is a right angle, this gradient, M of A, C, and this gradient, M of, what is it, A, B, if I multiply them, M of A, C multiplied by M of A, B, has to equal negative 1 for it to be perpendicular, right? So therefore, do you agree I can say M of AC is what? M of AC is 4 minus 0 over 0 plus 2, which is just 2. M of AB is going to be 4 minus 0 over 0 minus 8, which is going to be negative a half. Therefore, MAC is perpendicular to MAB. Yay, done. So that's 90 degrees. Isn't that nice? It says find the equation of the circle passing through the points C, A, and B. So there's some circle that is passing through all these points and we need to find the equation of it. Okay, so let's go through it. So do you agree the equation of the circle would be x minus a squared plus y minus b squared is equal to r squared. That is the equation of the circle. If we substitute point a in, I okay, guess sub in a, which is naught four, do you agree that we've got y, let's try again, um, eraser. We've got 4 minus b all squared is equal to r squared. That's equation 1, okay? If we substitute c in, I'll change the number c, we've got minus 2, 0. We have minus 2 minus a squared is equal to r squared. That's equation 2. And we also have 8 minus a squared is equal to r squared because the y value is 0 and that's equation 3. So do you agree we can equate these two? So we can go minus 2 minus a all squared is equal to 8 minus a all squared. Okay, so if I square root both, you've got to realize that you end up with two lots. You end up with minus 2 minus a is equal to 8 minus a, or minus 2 minus a 
is equal to minus 8 plus a. Okay. So if we take this across, this does not work because minus a plus a goes away. So that doesn't work. But when we take this across, we get minus 2 plus 8 equals a plus a. So minus 2 plus 8 is 6 is equal to 2a. Therefore, a is equal to 3. Okay, so now we've got the a value. We can now substitute that in. So now we know that a equals 3. We can substitute and then get r, right? So we can go minus 2 minus 3 all squared is equal to r squared. So it's minus 5 squared is 25 is equal to r squared. Aha, uh -huh. so now we can substitute that into this. So we've got 4 minus b all squared is equal to 25. Therefore, we've got 4 minus b is equal to 5. I don't know why there's brackets. Let me just fix that. Um, which means that minus b is going to equal to 1, therefore b equals negative 1. Or 4 minus b is equal to negative 5, which means that minus b is going to equal minus 9, so b is equal to 9. Hmm. Okay, wait, so let me just think about this. Um, I've made a mistake somewhere, I think. We know that therefore um, a equals 3. We know that, okay? So if a equals, is a equal to 3 or is a equal to minus 3? Okay, no, that's fine. So a equals 3 is fine. Now, if we substitute in, we get two values for b. Either, that can't work. You can't have two values for b that substitute all, that agree with all of them. Okay, so let me just erase some of this. Okay, do we agree that a equals three? We're happy with that. We've got minus two minus a squared is equal to r squared, or we've got eight minus a squared is equal to r squared, because either it's eight or it's minus two. So therefore we've got that these two are equal, therefore minus two minus a is equal to a minus eight, or minus two minus, there's a better way of doing this, of course, what we could do just to make sure we get it right, is we could square both sides, Okay, we could square both sides and then solve. Let's do that. I think let's make sure we get the correct answer with this. So let's do that. We're going to get 4 minus 4a plus 4a squared is equal to... Um, four no, plus a squared. Where is that coming from? 4a squared plus a squared is equal to 8 squared is 64 minus 16a plus a squared. So they cancel. Yay! So then if we take this across, it becomes 4 minus 64 is equal to minus 16a plus 4a. So it becomes minus 60 is equal to minus uh, 12a, therefore a is equal to 5. Okay, I'm happy with that. So then, much happier in fact. 12,560, yeah. Now, now that we've got that, we can substitute into this equation here which says, well, actually, we can substitute into either of these two that get R, okay? So let's do that. So let's use black. So we're going to go minus 2 minus A, all squared is going to equal R squared. 
So you've got minus 2 minus 5, all squared is equal to r squared. Therefore, r squared is going to be minus 2 minus 5 is minus 7, squared is 49. Oh, okay. So now we've got 4 minus b, all squared, is equal to 49. Right. So now I need to raise some more stuff. Okay, right. So now that we've done that, we can now solve for this B. So we've got 16 minus 8B plus B squared is equal to 49. Okay, so therefore we've got B squared minus 8B plus 16 minus 49 equals 0. So it's b squared minus 8b minus um, 49 minus 16. 9 minus 6 is a 3. That's a 33. Minus 33 equals 0. Factors of 33 are 11 and 3. So it would be b minus 11, b plus 3 equals 0. So b is equal to 11 or b is equal to 3. Huh, so now we need to make sure which one works. Okay, because then we'd have x, what is it? Um, minus 5 squared plus um, y minus 3 squared minus becomes plus 3 which would equal what? Um, so if we substitute this value in here, note 4, if x is naught, then this becomes 4 plus 3 is 7 squared is 49. That works. If we substitute this in, we get minus 2 minus 5 is 7 squared is 49. works. If we substitute this value in, 8 minus 3, 8 minus 5 is 3 squared. That doesn't work. Now, if this was 11, negative 11, uh, well, I would be running slowly. It's sorry, it's saying my computer is running slowly, it's affecting your audio, but I'm not sure what we're running slowly. Because there's nothing else running. Quite sad. Let me just see if I can fix it. Sorry for the delay, it's just that apparently my audio is really bad because this computer is running slowly. I'm not sure why the computer is running slowly um, because there's nothing else running on it as far as I know. So I just want to check to see if it is. Just give me half a second. Hmm. Okay. Um, right, so let's just move on to something a little bit easier that you can hear me with um, while we wait for this computer to decide what it wants to do. Um, it says simplify without the use of a calculator. So you do need a cast diagram, all stations to Cape Town. You've got sine 124, sine 64, plus sine 214, sine 26. 
Okay, so if we look at this, do you agree that that would be the same as saying sine of 180 minus what? Let's go look. It's going to be 180 minus, um, what am I doing? 124 equals 56. 56 degrees, then sine 64 plus sine of 180 plus, um, oh, I forgot that this was more detailed. I forgot that this was Windows 10. Okay, let's go to four, so that's going to be 34 degrees. Um, sine 26 degrees. Let me just see what else is running. Yeah, they could possibly be slowing it down. It's ready to Skype for business, which is what we need. Just a second. Nothing there. Okay, I'm afraid I can't find out what is causing this to run slowly. So I will just do the best I can. So therefore this becomes sine 180 minus 56 degrees is same as saying sine 56 because it's in the second quadrant and that is sine 64. Plus this is sine of 180 plus 34 is in the second third quadrant. So it's minus sine of 34 sine 26. Okay, so what's interesting about this is that if you look at the values, oh, there you go, let's see what's going on here. Um, okay, this one can go. That nice. Um, that can definitely go. Okay, I've got rid of a couple of things. I'm really hoping that um, that'll actually make things a little bit better for you. Right, so let's carry on. So if you think this, do you see that 56 plus 34 is 90? And 64 plus 26 is 90. So these are actually co ratios of each other. So we could say this is sine 56 sine 64. I agree that this is minus, but this could be the same as writing minus sine of 90 minus 56, and that would be sine of 90 minus 64, which should be the same as saying sine 56, sine 64 minus cos 56, cos 64, so that's a sine sine cos cos, and if that's the case, then it becomes um, sine of, if it's sine sine cos cos, um, I could rearrange that to become negative um, sine sine plus cos cos, which would then become um, cos 56, cos 64, minus sine 56, sine 64, which becomes negative cos 
of 64 minus 56, which becomes negative cos of 8. There you go. And that's as simple as it gets at this moment. Right, now it says P sine 25. Now, what does that mean? It means that if the same time P is equal to sine 25, remember it means P of 1. So we immediately have a triangle. If you want, you can draw it in your first quadrant. That's not a big deal. This would be 25 degrees. Sine is opposite of the hypotenuse. That would be P of 1. And this would be the square root of 1 minus P squared. And if this is 25 and this is 90, then this is going to be 90 minus 25, which is 65 degrees. Right, now they say write cos 50 sine 205 in terms of P. Cos 50 over sine 205. Okay, so first of all, cos of 50 could be broken down to cos of 2 times 25. And then we know that cos 2a is equal to cos squared a plus, sorry, minus sine squared a, which equals 2 cos squared a minus 1, which equals 1 minus 2 sine squared a. And since we've been given sine, I'm going to use this. So just a second, and that's the same as sine of 180 plus 25. So therefore, this becomes 1 minus 2 sine squared 50 over sine 180 plus is minus sine 25, which is going to be, sorry, that's not 50, that's 25. So this is going to be 1 minus 2 p squared over negative p. And that's it. That's as far as we can go with that. Right, last question. Sine, given that sine squared theta is equal to 1 minus cos 2 theta over 2, okay, hence or otherwise prove that cos squared theta is required to prove that cos squared theta is equal to 1 plus cos 2 theta over 2. Okay, they've shown, they've said that they gave us the sine squared theta is equal to 1 minus cos 2 theta over 2. So do you agree I could say that 2 sine squared theta is equal to 1 minus cos 2 theta and therefore I could say that cos 2 theta, negative cos 2 theta is equal to my um, 2 sine squared theta minus 1 therefore cos 2 theta would be equal to the same as um, minus 2 sine squared theta plus 1. So I could then substitute this in the right right-hand side. And I get 1 plus cos 2 theta over 2 is the same as 1 plus sorry, minus. and we're left with 1 minus 2 sine squared theta over 2, these two cancel, and you're left with 1 minus 2 sine squared theta, which happens to be cos squared theta proven. There we go. Okay, right, grade 12, good luck for tomorrow, please. The most important things I can tell you are not to panic. Do not panic. And just breathe and yeah, and get an early night because you need rest for math and science. Have a good evening. Bye. Good luck. Bye.